What's your name? Lynn. Lynn, what are you doing here? Riding my bike pretty much like everybody else. Seems a little high off the ground for that. Well, yeah, I may lower it. Okay, and what do you think about this uh, new venture behind us? Sir? I think it's great. I think Dallas needs it. And, uh, you know, there's nobody else around that's really had the guts to go, we're going to do just recumbents. <laughs> Hey, Bent Riders, the Laid Back Bike Report is on the road visiting local recumbent bike shops. This LBR at your LBS video is brought to you by TerraCycle, makers of exquisite parts and accessories for your bent. Today, we're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to see the only full-line Velomobile dealer in America. We're at Bicycle Evolution to talk to owner Doug Davis and his staff. Come on, let's go inside and check it out. Do, 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 do. Uh, put that right there. Da, da, da. Nice looking Quattrovello. All right. Where the where the heck is Doug? Oh, hey Gary. Doug. Hey. I was just making some adjustments to this one. I'd like to welcome the Wade Back Back Report to Bicycle Evolution. Thank you, sir. Doug, uh, we, uh, we know you've been working on uh, getting the shop open since about the first of the year, working very hard to get everything in order, and it's taken a little while, I know, but give us a, a, a status report now. Uh, what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of shape is the shop in right now? Well, Gary, it's getting there. It's, it's like anything. Uh, you do all the planning you can do, and then when the reality hits, you just do the best you can. Uh, so the store's open. Uh, we have bikes. We have automobiles. We have trikes. Uh, we have a product here. We have our, you know, kind of our first wave of, of normal products, shoes, shirts, other things like that. Uh, and more is coming. Uh, a lot of it got hung up uh, recently, uh, like even our carpet got hung up with the uh, government closure because it's actually sitting in the import bin somewhere. Some of my bikes are sitting there uh, waiting to come in the door, uh, but we're getting there. But we are open for business here and you can come by, you can test ride Velomobiles right now. That's right, you can, you can test ride almost every Velomobile out there. So we're, we're, we're in good shape that way. Why don't you give the folks a little idea about your qualifications for opening a Velomobile shop? I got online like, and, and started researching these things and uh, saw Velomobiles. Oh good, this is an enclosed trike. This is what I need. 2013, there, there's a couple of manufacturers of Velomobiles. They're in Europe and they're really hard to talk to. And, and I actually ended up finding a Velomobile. One of your friends, Jim Snyder, had a, had a Velomobile. But even then it was very hard because he had to work with the Europeans. It wasn't much difference. And it was, it was, it was just the, the, the process of getting it. And then you give them a whole lot of money and you cross your fingers and hope it shows up, which it did. And I, I had my first Velomobile at that point. It was probably the, the, the mid-spring of 2013. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. What was that? Uh, it was a mango. It was a center mango. In fact, what I did was I kind of promised myself that now that I've been through this, I will get another Velomobile. Now you've got the mango, and now you're starting to think about uh, maybe that second Velomobile. What's, what? what goes on after that? So, so I rode the mango for a number of years. I think it was probably two years. So at the time, the fastest Velomobile was a Milan. And there's a gentleman in Canada that was making them, and so I put the word out that I that I that I wanted one. So I ended up buying this Milan GT, which is the GT is for the larger sized bicyclist, uh, and so I got that bike, and it is considerably faster. So now you're thinking maybe I need another Velomobile. Exactly right. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I, need, I bought the sand wedge. Now I need the pitching wedge, right? So you know, uh, but I got the Quattro Velo, and that was perfect. That was that was the bike. Uh, it was fa It wasn't quite as fast as the Mango. It was I mean, quite as fast as the Milan, but it was just as fast. It was faster than the Mango. Had four wheels. It was really stable. Uh, it climbed like a banshee. It climbs unbelievably quick. 
Uh, and so that's the bike now. Right, and in fact, this is what I'm sitting in yeah, right here. So, um, yeah, just uh, we're going to get uh, into uh, all, each of the Velomobiles in more depth. But, yeah, that's what I'm sitting in right now. So it's just uh, occurring to me that now from the utility, utilitarian standpoint you were picking a different velo because this one worked better for this and this one but now you're getting to the point like you just want to try out whatever's yeah, coming next the difference. yeah okay. it was there was no planning here i had this it came in the box while i was on the road and i said okay well i'll take it apart and put it together and, and take it with me and i'll just i'll just go ride this one mm -hmm. and just to see which one i like better because online there's always a debate which is the best velo mobile sure and i was like well i'm gonna go find out i'm gonna just to figure it out on my own and whatever i don't like i'll sell well at least i'll tell my wife i'm gonna sell uh because I, I haven't been able to sell a bike in my life that's why i opened a bike shop uh but basically this is all just to get more room for what you exactly. get exactly this is really a storage closet so that's pretty much the background of your riding right yeah so. that's, that's where i am today so now you've had all this experience with the various velomobiles and I'm wondering, where did the idea of having a Velomobile shop, where did the concept of this store that we're in right now come from? Well, it, it came from a couple of places. One is the experience of getting a Velomobile is, is still difficult. And I wanted to make that easier. And I had a lot of people that would, would, would call me out of the blue or message me online and say, hey, Doug, can I, can I come see if I can fit in your you know, Velomobile? And so I've had, I don't know, maybe... 20 or 30 people come to the house. They've flown in from out of state or they've driven by. Uh, they parked their RVs out in front of my house. Uh, and just, just come and sit in a Velo. Maybe we'll see if they fit because the, 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 there's no, I mean, they, they're pretty adjustable, but people have a, a preconceived notion that they're hard to fit in. And, and there are some of them that are, that are difficult. The, the, the Milan SL and, the, and the, the, the DEF are very narrow. So I, I, it's completely understandable. But so many people kept doing it and then would get into conversation about how do you get them, how do you ship them. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, I've, my other company that I do does a lot of shipping. Let me see what it would cost me to ship them. And I found out, well, I can ship them a lot less than the Europeans can. So maybe there's a little business in shipping these things and, uh, you know, making a little money by splitting the difference and things like that. So I started kind of organizing that. So this is turning into like, what am I going to do for my retirement, yeah. right? Right. So now I'm thinking, well, I, I kind of, and, and my doctor, the whole time I keep hearing my doctor and, and, and my wife and everybody's saying, you need to find a less stressful job. So I said, you know what? I need to go ahead and, and, and I'll just go ahead and start a little business bringing Velomobiles in and, and helping people do that. So I, I went over to the Netherlands, which I hadn't been to the Netherlands in years. And I sat down with the various manufacturers and kind of sketched out what I wanted to do. And the whole time this plan starts to evolve in my head, wait a minute, there's more to this than, than, than just Velomobiles. And the idea came to me while I was there. It was like, we got to go ahead and just do all sorts of recumbents and trikes and things like that. So it was kind of the concept we were going to do. And so I started letting the word go out that I was doing this. And then I started getting more people call me and say, hey, if you, are you going to carry ice? Are you going to do this? Are you going to have cruise by? You, you know, can I? And it's like, okay, maybe there's something bigger than this. Uh, and then I started thinking when I was over there, uh, I was actually on a bike ride. I was riding out to Dronton from Amsterdam. I was thinking about this whole thing. And I was thinking about what would I want when I came into a bike store? What I want is a, a bicycle store that's completely inclusive, supporting everybody from, you know, from the guy that just found out he had type 2 diabetes or, or has lupus or has cancer and, and, and has been told he needs to exercise, all the way up to an extreme racer. Uh, and I want to have everybody in there. I want ch people that, to, to know they can come in the shop regardless of their level of fitness. And not only will I give, get them a bike that works for them, because, again, if you're 350 pounds, you probably don't want to sit in this Velomobile that I'm sitting in. You're way past the weight limit, and you're not going to fit through the hole. <laughs> but I've got one over there that will. Or I've got a trike, or I've got a day six bike, or any of these other kind of bikes that are made to heavy, for a heavier person. And uh, in the process of doing this, I decided to buy a fitness coaching company and bring it in. Besides fitness, what else do people have fun with? And so I did focus groups. And I brought in all sorts of people from all sorts of parts of life and what have you. One of two things was always the next answer, depending, and it was kind of interesting how it fell through the demographics, but one of them was, if my bike breaks down, I won't know what to do. And that's mm -hmm. a big issue. Mm -hmm. And the other one was, I'm worried about riding in traffic because there's no safe place to ride a bike. So this whole concept came to me, he's like, we, we need to fix this. So we came up with this whole concept of, of, of we, we, we jokingly called it keeping you rolling, uh, but we fixed the, we, it's a subscription where it doesn't matter what you do to your bike, We're, we'll keep you running. Okay, Doug, so now uh, the concepts are there, you have some ideas, a lot of good ideas about what you want to do. 
but you got to find a place to do it, right? So give me an idea about what went through, what, what the process was uh, for finding the place we're in right now. And so now I needed to find this, re this, this retail location that was on a bike trail that had all the right demographics and all this, and, and, and I put it all through this model and I look at it, and it turns out there was a place and it was not too far from where I live. It w turned out to be, uh, you know, a, a, a very accidental, fortuitous thing that this, this, this retail location was nearby where uh, all the demographics lined up. You know, and, it's, and it was interesting talking to the real estate agents about it because I went to an agent said, here's all the stuff I want. And they looked at it and said, well, that's a lot of data and we're not real sure what to do. And when I gave this, well, I like this spot right here. And they were like, oh, you, you'll, you won't like this spot. Uh, I, was, I was assured that I wouldn't like the spot. And I said, why? He said, because there's no, no, no traffic there. I said, yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. There's no traffic. So we started working the deal. We ended up with a, we ended up with a spot. Uh, and then we've gone through the process of getting it built out as a little bike store. So what does someone do if I'm looking for a Velomobile and I live in Washington State, for instance? What do I have to do to get here uh, to check something out uh, on the floor? Well, uh, you know, the nice thing about being in Dallas is we're centrally, centrally located and a fairly inexpensive fly-in. Um, and what we've set up for the for on the web is people can set up appointments. So they want to fly because a, a velomobile isn't quite as adjustable as a regular bike. It takes a few minutes. Uh, sometimes you have to take the cowling off to do that. So we have a way you can schedule an appointment. And I want to ride a Quattro Velo. I want a DF. I want you know whatever whatever velomobile you want to ride. If you know it, you can set up and schedule an appointment. And we'll collect the data that we need to, to fit it for you, or at least get mostly close. You know, uh, how tall are you? How big are you? And then they can come into DFW or they can come into Love Field, either one. And while Dallas is not really known for it, we actually do have a nice light rail system. And the light rail system goes all around town from both airports and uh, ends up uh, about two miles down the road from here is where it terminates to the, to the station. And then there's a bus that gets you from that station, goes back and forth down the road that we're sitting on, uh, uh, once every uh, once every thirty minutes. So if you you know didn't, but but we also tell people on the appointments if they just call us, we'll pick them up at the light rail terminal because it literally is two miles down the road, uh, and, and we can run them back up to the store. So it either way works. And then uh, we've started working with one of the hotels that's at the station. There's a bunch of them right in an area there, uh, and trying to work a deal where we can we can go ahead and go book through the whole appointment system because this process could be a day or two right yeah, i mean we, we kind of hope it is because w there's a lot of velomobiles here and we have such great riding areas and you know uh, one of the things that i thought about early on is the test ride i got for my trike was around the parking lot like no you could come here uh once we get you set up figured out and got there i'm going to give you a gps with the route you want to take i'm going to give you a garmin head unit or or what have you and say hey, you, you want to do a 20 mile ride there you go, there's it. I'll go with you, one of the guys will go with you, one of the people that work in the store will go with you, uh, or just follow this route. And you know, if you have any trouble, call us. And go out and, 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 and ride, because that's the only way you really know a bike is to ride a bike. And you're not gonna get that doing donuts in a parking lot. And then uh, you mentioned the, the fitness service that you guys are gonna offer to people. Tell me just briefly about what that's about. Okay, so what we've got is, a, is part of this whole system uh an integrated fitness we can uh, you know you can come in and ride with us indoors you can ride with us outdoors and we can analyze your rides and we can work with you on plans and stuff to bring you you know to your goals now we're going to talk to richard a little bit later on about all the specifics of that might see how that works we're going to actually maybe i'll try that out you uh introduced the idea a little bit earlier about some of the fears uh, people have about g getting on a bike or velomobile uh, and, um, and, and you've addressed that in, in a way with a, a special service here. Let's talk about that a little bit. So we, we, we've kind of come up with this plan called Keeping You Rolling, uh, and it does the work of taking the concern about bike maintenance, bike repairs out, out, out. Uh, and in a lot of ways it's like the AAA for the, for the bikes, uh, to, to, so it makes people a little bit easier to understand. So your bike breaks down, uh, we do the repairs for it. It's, it's const, you know, if, if you have a flat tire, we'll fix it for you. If you have a broken spoke, we'll fix it for you. Uh, all those kind of things will come get you if you're on the side of the road somewhere or we'll get some, one of our agents come get you. Somehow we'll get you, so it, it'll get you back to the store so we can get you back, back on the road. You talked a lot about uh, the tours that you enjoyed early on as you were getting into the Velomobiles and such, and I know you want to offer 
information about this to your customers as well. So how are you going to do that? So Gary, we've got a whole section that we've, we've put on the side of the store for these bike tour companies to, to, to and, and a lot of them are the ones I've used because as I, as I went through the, the process of getting back into shape, I, I did a lot of bike tours. Uh, and bike tours are a wonderful way to, to take you know, a little vacation and that you stay in shape on. And so I wanted to give part of the store for that industry because a lot of people I've talked to, don't, and certainly when we did our focus group, they didn't know you could even do that. That's a way to keep people on bikes. There's something to do. You can go somewhere. So part of the idea is to get people excited about doing this, and the other part is informational, right? Yeah. So you'll have contact information? Yeah, we'll have contact and, 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 and other information available for people to pick up. But mostly we want people to see that this is all something you can do. There's a whole world out here. Uh, how about maybe, uh, Doug, we take a little tour of the shop? Uh, we could do that. Let's go. We're going to take a little stroll here through the shop, and if you could tell us uh, what sorts of uh, products you have, we'll start with the bikes, and uh, point things out to us. Let us know what you have on, on hand here. Sure, Gary. Um, we have some, some Day 6 bikes, which these, these were really an interesting bike. They're a standard upright frame geometry, but they've got these big, nice cushioned seats, uh, and they're made for fairly stout people. Uh, there, I, and I rode one the other day. I was surprised. It was it was actually a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more comfortable than I was expecting. They come with big disc brakes. They handle really well. They've got a nice laid back feel, uh -huh. uh, like an old like a long wheelbase recumbent. Uh, and wh what I was really shocked about them is how quick they turn. So uh, unlike the long wheelbase recumbents, which I'm sh we're, which we're all familiar with, which sometimes take a couple of lanes to turn around, these things turn around quick. Okay. And they're pretty economical. They're very economical, yeah. Okay. All right, let's stroll over here. What, do, what else do we have? So over here we've got uh, these. These are made by Batch, uh, and this is really what we'd consider our entry-level bikes. Uh, they, we, we were looking for a bike that had a lot of features that uh, did not break the bank. Because we figure a lot of our customers are like, ah, we, I want to try. And so we need to find a way to get them in the program. And so that's what we brought these guys in for. And they're very feature rich for the price. Okay, very good. Let's roll along here. What else? Uh, well, we have this thing right here. Yeah, uh, brand new looking bike. Yeah, no, this is a little older. This is, this is a, an original Trek UCI racing bike. Uh, Man, just holding on to this makes me feel like I need to take some drugs. And so, uh, you know, the 90s called, they want their bike back. No, this is a great bike. I rode this bike for, this bike's probably got 100 plus thousand miles on it. I've raced it and I've run it, what have you. I, I actually just brought it up here so I would have a bike to ride when I was doing test rides with people that I could just easily ride. Stay and, with them. Yeah, stay with them and talk to them and things like that. All so right. But now we're into some recumbents. What do we have here? So we've got some cruise bikes here. Uh, this is a Vendetta right here. This is their high end. And then we've got a, the, uh, the, the 20 and the 40 over here. And cruise bikes are fun. They climb fast. Uh, these are the, let me pull this guy up forward a little bit. These are unique in the industry because they've got this front moving bottom bracket. But when I started this store, I said, Look, I got to have cruise bikes because they're very rare. You don't see them in a lot of stores and they are absolutely a blast to ride. And fast. They are fast. Let's move on to some trikes. Uh, what do you carry in here? Well, we have these ice trikes here. We have a couple of these HDs. Uh, you know, we have his and hers HDs right now. Uh, uh, we have some VTXs on the way. They're in customs right now, so we'll have those here shortly. Uh, and then down down the aisle here a little bit, we've got some sprints. We have an adventure here. Mm -hmm. This is the advi ice adventure. There's a couple of more of them being put together. Uh, these are really good, good good trikes, and it folds up really nicely, and you can stick it in the back of it pretty much almost anything. So right. it's easy to carry around with you. Okay. And one more interesting-looking uh, entry-level trike, this, right? Yeah, this is our entry-level trike. This is an Avenue trike, uh, who we all know is... Right, our, our friend Peter Stoll, right? Uh, he talked me into these things in, uh, at Recumbent Con. And I went ahead and got a, got a couple. And you know what? Turns out the people are interested in these. We, you know, they're a little he they're a little heavy, but for an entry level trike, not bad. They're sturdy. Uh, they they they're easy to work on. And they're a blast to ride. Yeah, I, they're fun to ride. Yeah. yeah, they're really fun to ride. This is an original carbon trike. This is actually my original carbon trike, which I bought uh, what two and a half years ago when they first came out. Uh, and now this is what the Bichetta carbon trike was based on. Mm -hmm. So Bichetta has a, a relationship now with the carbon trike company. You now get Bichettas. But I brought this in because people want to see what this Bichetta is going to look like. And this is really close. This is the older brother of the Bichetta uh, carbon trike. They've done a couple of really nice improvements. There were some things that I used to complain to Lars about on mine that I know they fixed. So, uh, but if you want to ride one right now, I can get you really close. Well, this shop is going to be known 
for maybe a number of things, but number one, Velomobiles. So let's take a look at the Velomobiles you have in stock right now for people to come and ride. What do we have? All right. Uh, well, first of all, this shop's probably going to be known as the most expensive mistake my wife reminds me of over and over again. But <laughs> besides that. It will now, yes. <laughs> besides that, uh, we, have a, we have a number of Katanga Wows in. This is a particular one that we're standing here next to is a, uh, what, what they call a, uh, a, a soft tail. It's got a shock in, a in the, in, in the uh, rear wheel. And this has also got a roll-off in it, a 14-speed roll-off in it. So it's a very comfortable ride, uh, really meant for not so much sportive racing or heavy. It's just meant for cruising and enjoy, uh, enjoying the ride. Very good. So, and WOW is uh, from Katanga in the Czech, yeah, in Czech, Czech Republic. Republic right? Yes. All right. All right. And what's next? And what we have next to this one right here is we have a Quattrovella. We actually have two Quattrovellas here right now. This is a regular Quattrovella Plus. And... Uh, it's the little bit larger version of the two. And the Quattrovellas are, are well known because they're four wheels instead of two. I mean, instead of three. Mm -hmm. Instead of two, that's a regular bike. Instead of three, like the tricycle Velomobiles. Uh, it has four 20-inch wheels around it. Uh, it has a different rear differential drive, which is really f interesting. What do you have here? So this is a Milan uh, GT. Uh, this is actually one of my bikes. Uh, I have some of these on order. I uh, believe they will be here in March. Okay. Uh, we have the we have a couple of different sizes. They have a, I have an SL, which is the little skinny one. Then they have a regular one. Then they have a GT, which is the big one. And I have an NX, which is an even bigger one. Uh, we have the SLs and the NXs and the GTs on order. And like most of the things in this business, they take a little while to be made and come in. So we're in. We're getting there. We have a Mango. Uh, have one of those in route. Right and this here. is that first Mango, right? This is that my you talked first Mango. Yeah. This I have no idea how many thousands of miles this bike has had on it. Um, but it's been, it was my very first Velomobile, uh, and uh, it's, it's, been, it's a great bike. It has an interesting mid-drive that we'll have to talk about at some point. All right, now this is a beautifully designed Velomobile, and love the color. What do you have here? This is a Mulsanne, which is the, which is the only French-made Velomobile, and this is, as far as I know, the only Mulsanne in the U.S., uh, and so this is this is a beautiful. Uh, it's also one of the most accessible Velomobiles, which that the, the whole top pops off and slides forward, so it's very easy to get it out of, okay. which is what it's really known for. Other than the just absolute gorgeous designs on it. So this is what they call a sportive wow. And if you look in the in the front of it, the no, the lights are a little different. This nose is a little shorter. Uh, it's very sportive, and it doesn't have a rear suspension in it. Uh, so it's really this is the racing configura configuration. Uh, and what's really interesting about this machine yeah. is, and I'm going to show you this here, and, and so I'm going to take this top off, I'm going to hold this in one hand, and I'm going to hold the bike in the other. Wow. Wow. All right, great, Doug. So um, what about the rest of the store? You want to take us through some of that? Sure, but you know what? I'm going to let somebody else do that, Gary, because I have a gentleman over here I'm going to introduce you to. His okay. name is Greg Mitchell. Uh, he's he's an ex-road race guy, so you know, give him a little slack. You know, we're, we're working on him. We've we've almost got him converted. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's yeah, bring Greg. him on in. <laughs> All right. Hello, Greg. Hey, Come on Good over here. All right. I'll leave you two at it. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Well, Greg, that's great. Uh, tell us uh, really a little bit about your background, if you could. What where did you come from in the world of bikes? I basically uh, ended up going to work for Performance Bicycles. May they rest in peace at this point. <laughs> as it turns out, <laughs> so, as, as yeah, of this yeah, exactly. uh, as of this video, uh, yeah. they they recently are out of business now. Exactly. All right. And so um, I spent five years working for them as a manager, um, a store manager here in the Plano area, and from there I went to work for another bi a local bicycle shop but through a mutual friend. Um, I, I, I was brought into the picture, and um, he was looking for a store manager, and I was looking for something that was on a different level. We've seen the bikes. Now I want you to tell me about what else is going to be here. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, being it's we're going to be all inclusive of all cycling, naturally from two wheels to four wheels to three wheels, everything. Um, so everybody is definitely invited. Everybody will have a place here, and part of that will be that we will have two uh, mechanics that will be working, um, and we will have a full line shop that will be able to handle pretty much anything in the cycling industry. They will have a emphasis on trikes, velomobiles, and they'll be trained in that as well. Um, so that's coming as well. They'll have their, and they will have an open air uh, shop. So they will be interacting 
directly with and close with um, the sales floor, the sales guy. The guy. So kind of a walkthrough uh, idea, is that right? So uh, people that come in can actually walk right through the shop yeah. and... Yeah. yeah, you can engage the mechanic and, hey, I need this, I need that, and, you know, and th that kind of thing. So it, we're kind of excited Great idea to that. keep them very accessible. Yes, absolutely. Oh, um, okay. We'll have an area also um, that's going to be a, a seating area for watching uh, whatever races are going on and, and other events and uh, people on YouTube that have, you know, really popular shows. Do they have like things like green that? green hats? I don't know. Wow. So, I'll have to watch one of those. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's Guy Solomon. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll definitely have yeah. to tune in. We'll have our apparel. We'll have shoes and socks and helmets electronic uh, equipment as well i mean electronics we'll be doing um yeah lights and uh you know white and red i mean all, all uh, everything you get in a bicycle shop we're a bicycle shop so one of the things too that is really important to us is the community and the riding aspect of the community and having group rides um, a very long-standing ride in this area called the east side ride uh, with plano bicycle association uh, is starting from this location now. We're going to have some more uh, rides out of here as well and have a bigger presence. Um, and some of the amenities that they get when they come to us as well is that we'll be open. We have our water station that has water and ice and all the stuff that they need so they can fuel up and stuff in everything right here. All right, that sounds great, Greg. So thanks a lot for sharing your information with us, and we look forward to seeing you in the shop again. Yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> folks, I guess that is a wrap here from Bicycle Evolution in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Hope you've enjoyed all of the velomobiles, trikes, bikes that we've shown you, and the time we spent uh, with our good friend here, Doug Davis, the owner of the shop. Doug, thank you so much for spending time uh, to show us around the Layback Bike Report. We really appreciate your hospitality, and we learned so much from you this weekend. Well, thank you for coming by, Gary. Glad you were able to make it down here. And thank I'm glad you were able to go ride some of our roads out here. We did. We had a really fun time doing that. And right here, my buddy, Trey Burgoyne. Burgoyne, Burgoyne. I, I just want to say one thing. Thank you so much, Trey, for helping me out this weekend, coming all the way from Mississippi, and for the hat. Oh, certainly. Right. We'll see you next time. Okay. It's looking good here. My hat straight? Yep. <laughs> That's the first time. <laughs> Where the heck's Doug? Oh, hey, Gary. What? What? Sorry, I was just making some adjustments on this one. Welcome to the lay. lay welcome to the lay. <laughs> Now you got to have to disappear again, aren't you? Man. <laughs> Doug, I know you've been working on. Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Doug. Yeah. Here, what? here, here, in, here, uh, and uh, there. Okay. You don't have to clip in for this, you know. It's my phone. Not gonna. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got a little stitch there. Oh. Oh, oh that hurts. Oh, oh man. Okay. Now take the real number two. Ah, yeah. How the heck do you get out of one of these things, anyway? Yeah. Break well, that would be too easy. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. We're okay. On to the back one. There go. Okay. There's the pot. Stand on the seat. Out I go. Did I kick anything important? All right, Greg, how about some of the accessories behind us here? Can you give us an idea about some of the stuff you'll be yeah. selling in? Uh, uh, so that would be the uh, nameless mutual friend. That'd be Jeff Bishop from Oklahoma. Jeff Bishop? I think you've had him on your show. Velo American? Velo American, or American as we like to say down here. <laughs> But the, yes. the hatted wonder? The hatted wonder, yes. I, ha I wear hats because Jeff. of him. Let's so. get Jeff in here. Yes. There we go. Hey, there's, yes. there's my buddy. Hey guys. That is him, Jeff Bishop in person. I'm the nameless mutual friend. Photobomber. Now what? There we go. Yeah, yeah. This guy. Oh, I got her yawning. <laughs> slower, slower, slower. Slower, I like slower, it. slower, slower. There you go. Hello, Gary. You can't have all the fun. <laughs> <laughs>